I've seen such beautiful things that cosplayers have done, and I'm just like, oh, I just wish that they had ironed the seams, you know, when you're building, that you just you iron well, your garments. Well, how nice for you to know that they're, uh, that for them to know that you're watching, that you're looking at their Yeah. Screen. Hello, everybody, and welcome to CBC Shaftesbury and Fan Expo HQ and clearly my bedroom where there's the best light. I'm Sharon Matthews. I play Flo Chakowitz on Frankie Drake Mysteries. And I am here today so we can get to know a little bit more about the costumes, the costume design and building process, and show you some specific costumes and talk about them with the amazing designers of Frankie Drake Mysteries and Murdoch Mysteries, which you can see on CBC and CBC Gem. Okay, let's get to it. This is Joanna Serum Komla, the costume designer for Murdoch Mysteries, which is in its 14th season. Joanna, I hope I said your name right. I wrote it out phonetically. It's very close. Very, very close. There. I'm very proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. And uh, this is Jennifer Jarvis, who is the costume designer for Frankie Drake Mysteries, which is in its fourth season. And uh, we call her JJ on set. Um, thank you, Joanna and JJ, for coming and, and answering all my in-depth questions again while I'm in my bedroom and uh, and um, uh, JJ's with all of her shoes. <laughs> Lord. And uh, and Joanna's with her sequins. God bless. All right, let's get right to it. Okay, let's go with Joanna. When you are creating costumes from scratch for a period piece, where do you source your designs and do you use actual period patterns and pieces? Well, uh, Murdoch Mysteries, having been going on for 14 seasons, has a large collection of patterns. We do use period patterns that come in all sorts of wonderful books uh, and then adapt them for a more modern body. Uh, we also also use a lot of books. We have a lot of books that we reference photos from and then we see how can we come up with a great version for a modern actor. Fantastic. And um, so what are some resources for someone who say blocked in their home right now who can't go anywhere and they want to build themselves um, a Murdoch Mysteries costume? Uh, where could they go on the internet maybe to find a pattern or a book? Like what are, do you have sources that they might be able to click on to maybe go and find? Absolutely. Uh, Etsy has a whole bunch of people who have taken period patterns and adapted them. So you could even send them your sizes and they'll give you a version of the pattern and then you have to print it out on your printer. And what's amazing is it prints out on like 46 pages that you have to glue together as a puzzle. Oh. But you could totally get a, a period pattern at home. Just you can type in Edwardian or 1900 shirt waist into Etsy and people will um, take a period pattern and adapt it for you. So that's really exciting and very accessible for everyone. And Joanna, when you say adapt it for a modern body, what exactly do you mean by that? I think that, uh, you know, people were a lot smaller. Um, people were a lot smaller and, or the patterns exist very small. It, in general, when it comes to vintage and antique clothing, why the small versions exist is because people, no, people who were normal size were wearing everything else to death and you know, there were wars and everything got used up. And the, uh, so smaller versions of things are what still exists. So it may be the fact, maybe it was smaller patterns are still in existence and they've been adapted to fit us. That's why when you go to the museums, all the costumes are so small. I love that this is mostly for me now, you guys. I just have questions <laughs> for myself. All right. Again, are there, if someone, say, wants to um, go out and make uh, my my smock for the morgue, my morgue smock. Right. What I like to call my Frankenstein outfit, because it's like, yes. I feel like Dr. Frankenstein in it. Um, where where might they go on the internet right now when they're, again, locked in their home to kind of find that? Well, I think Joanna touched upon some really great resources like Etsy and things like that. Um, a lot of people can draft patterns by just look like looking at the clothing. We had a we actually had a cosplayer. Really? Yeah, we had a cosplayer work with us in our department this year. Oh, and, I didn't know that. Yeah, she she was a regular daily with dressing extras and on the truck a lot, and uh, there, she was so imaginative and would look at something and could create it. 
because they kind of it's they kind of create costumes from nothing and from home and they don't have like the 20 sewers that we might have in yeah, the yeah, yeah. you know it's amazing these. i have to say someone sent me a cosplay person from la sent me uh, a picture of them in my uh, um morgue outfit oh with my god wig and everything it freaked yeah. me out i was excited and a little bit scared at the same time but mostly excited mostly excited okay all right so next question ladies Joanna, on Murdoch, the costumes have to look period appropriate, but they also have to be workable for actors. How do you balance accuracy versus functionality? Well, uh, I wouldn't say the costumes on Murdoch are 100% accurate, because if it was, all the women would be walking around in white blouses and brown skirts, and that Fair. wouldn't be very interesting at all. Um, so when we balance it with functionality, uh, I guess you just make clothing that is a little more easy to move in. So, you know, when a garment of the period may be really strict or really boned, instead that we give a certain type of ease to it. Um, not every actress is comfortable wearing a corset, so we have a more modern version of something that just reminds them how to stand, which is really mm -hmm. important. Because the corset uh, in our period, Edwardian period, doesn't really change the look of the garment that much because you put so many layers over it. It's all about yeah. how it reminds the performer to, to hold themselves, which is really, I think, very interesting on camera. Mm -hmm. um, so we have some we have some more modern elasticized type corsets to, to, remain, mm -hmm. to remind our actors how to stand. Um, we don't put everybody in all the layers of petticoats and bloomers. We don't put the men in long underwear underneath their garment unless they're going to take their pants off on camera. So mm -hmm. uh, we are using <laughs> modern shoes, but that look period. So because if you were to try and put person in, in, in a recreation of a real period shoe, it would not they would not be comfortable or sturdy or, you know, they would be very mm -hmm. slippy or whatever. So uh, we don't want pinched, pinched shoes face on camera. So it's very, and, and we're super lucky that because we have such long skirts, we can often hide when an actor uh, is wearing a more comfortable shoe. Fortunately, as, as the show progresses, the headlines are going up and I'm like, what am I going to do? How am I going to hide? How am I going to hide people's feet? Um, basically, what, what happens, Joanna, is you ask the cameraman before every last take, can you see my feet? That's what the four ladies freaky do. And I wear a very short Ugg, the shortest Ugg. I'm the oldest, so I know a bit better. Uh, um, okay. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you, Joanna. Now, JJ, interestingly, on Frankie, while well, all the extras and guest stars have period-appropriate clothing, as well as Mary Shaw and Flo's uniforms, which are also period-appropriate, the lead ladies uh, live in a bit of their own different fashion world. Can you tell me a little bit about that, JJ? Well, I have to admit that sometimes Frankie looks like a time traveler. In I love that. The wrong, <laughs> the wrong period. But I think I just tend to try and make things look period. And I'm not mm -hmm. sure which period it is. Um, but I, there are four women and mm -hmm. I try and just make them look as good as possible. Um, so I'll go for like textures and colors and things like that, mm -hmm. so, you know. I think you do a beautiful job balancing all the, the patterns and the textures. It's, that's what's to me really exciting about when I watch the, the four ladies together. Well, it is hard actually to put four women together in a room and have it them is. all complement each other and not have the same colors and things like that. I mean, it's a, it's a struggle, it's like a puzzle. And then you'll have one actor who wants to wear a red dress instead of the blue one I gave them but then I have someone else in red, so it becomes very complicated and very diplomatic in the way I have to present it or convince someone to not wear something. Look at me. Look at me looking at you through slitted <laughs> eyes. <laughs> I won't say any names. I'm not going to say any names. When we go into costume but, fittings, you always say, these are your three choices. And depending yeah. on how the puzzle pieces work, you're gonna wear one of these three choices. Yeah. And I have to say this season watching it has been amazing. Actually, I've been watching both seasons because I watched a little bit of Murdoch before we start on Frankie. And the way all the color palettes and all the textures are put together are just beautiful. You ladies do an amazing job. All right, you guys, let's chat a bit about ready to wear costumes for both shows. 
and we're going to show you some examples, fancy multimedia. Uh, people think that everything gets built from scratch, but it doesn't. And you don't have to do that. Even designers don't do it all the time. So here are some examples of pieces from both shows that you can find in stores right now, you guys. Let's start with JJ and Frankie Drake. Now for Frankie, we have some pieces that are purchased and some that were modified. This is a, a great example of that. So Jennifer, can you tell us, this was for the ghost episode, the Halloween episode. Can you tell us about the pieces that were modified and some of the pieces that were purchased in this picture? Okay, well, this is a real collection of random items put together. Perfect. But um, a lot of it's from Malabar and Stratford, the rental places, your outfits from Old Navy, um, Frankie's. <laughs> Frankie Shield is from Party City. A lot of the tiaras and bangles are from Party City. We purchased Trudy's dress. Um, her headpiece is rented from a rental place in Toronto that caters mm -hmm. to film. But um, yeah, we did. We modified. We bought some shin guards at Sport Check and spray painted them gold for Frankie. I think we did. And then made the leather straps, just bought lacing and spray painted. We used a lot of spray paint mm -hmm. and just a lot of combining, you know. What I loved about my outfit was I looked at it and I went, I look like Carmen San Diego, which I love. And um, I love that exactly. And I love that you can, when I looked at every piece, which I, and I loved every piece. And I love that it was part of the inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> um, I love that you could get every piece. I was like, this is all from Old Navy. Like this was all purchasable online and you could get it. But, but you can do that. I mean, your coat and your shirt and your pants are from Old Navy, but the hat is a, a vintage man's fedora. So it's like mm -hmm. you kind of combine things to make it look period. So you don't, and it doesn't need to all be period. No, go ahead. Go ahead, Jen. JJ. Well, it doesn't all need to be period. You just can kind of throw accessories in and uh, it sets the tone for it. So real, you, you can choose from different places. You could go to Party City, you could go to Old Navy, you could look around online. Like that's the thing that I think is so amazing and that people maybe have a little bit more time for is they can actually look around online to, to assemble this look. Now, can you tell us a little bit about Wendy Crewson's costume? Cause that was, you built that, yes? We did build that and it was just, it was, a few of us going along Queen Street and other fabric stores and just buying all the chiffons and crepes. Because I'm a big fan of turquoise. So I mm -hmm. try to put lots of people in turquoise. Um, mm -hmm. And I just bought the most beautiful fabrics I could find. And then we kind of built it organically on the Judy at the office. You know, it's, it's a mm -hmm. collaboration. There's about five of us in the office and we all kind of have opinions and feedback and input. Um, now, let's go to uh, Frankie's costumes, Frankie's uh, regular day wear. And can you talk to me, because these are not modified. These are things that you bought and literally she walked on to set on. Can you tell us a bit about the silhouettes and the lines and the fabrics that you're looking for when you're buying something? That's a great example. Um, when you're buying something and that you think, I can put this right on Lauren and have her walk on set without doing anything to it. Well, these Aritzia pants. <laughs> are wide legged so it's nice. very time appropriate period appropriate the skirt that trudy's wearing i tend to look for longer skirts that go below the knee um, and the colors like i have her in a uh, burnt orange sweater from club mm -hmm. monaco mm -hmm. so it's kind of that color and then a purple suede coat um just to bring in because i like to punch up the colors a lot in this show mm -hmm. and and throw a hat on her and she kind of looks period. And she she's the one who wears jewelry and things like that. But, and you can tell that her shoes look period, but you know, as Joanna mentioned earlier, we don't use actual period shoes for the leads usually. So um, we just find things that look period. And where do you source most, do you have a place that you source most, most of the shoes from? There is a store in Queen Street that sells old looking shoes which is mm -hmm. kind of a strange thing, period looking shoes, but there is a, there's a, there is a market and niche market for it mm -hmm. online. Can yeah. you name the store? Are we allowed? Can we, can you name the store on Queen street that sells the old time shoes? I hope it survives. <laughs> like, Oh yeah. Fair enough. But it's called Scarpino, but um, you know, a lot of shoe oh. stores haven't made it in this. I love that shoe store. Yeah. It's really cool. Shoes from there. Hopefully yeah. if they don't, they'll have a, they'll have a online, an online presence. 
Yeah. Thanks, JJ. That was great. So, Joanna, for Murdoch Mysteries, we have a dress and a top that were modified and a dress that was worn almost as is. We're going to start with a brown Zara dress and a uh, burnt orange top that ended up being this outfit for Shawnee's. So, uh, can we see, multimedia fabulous people, can we see the original brown dress now and the burgundy top? And can you tell us, Joanna, uh, the transformation? Well, uh, we required Violet Hart to have triples. She had a stunt double, plus she was getting covered in blood. So when we, we often look, uh, I often look at what's in stores right now to see what we, what we can find so uh, we don't have to build everything from scratch. But also mm -hmm. it gives me an opportunity to think outside of the box. So this is a dress from Zara and it feels period because of the large sleeve. Mm -hmm. um, it, even though if you were to do a proper close up on it, you know, a proper uh, costume historian would see that the type of gathering and whatnot is not quite accurate. But what, what does make something look almost instantly Edwardian is when you put a collar on it. So also uh, at the same time, Zara was selling this orange lace top, this one. So what I did with this orange lace top is we cut it into a V like this and we mm -hmm. cut off the sleeves and we put that, we lined it and then we put it over top of the dress. We added brown velvet. Here we go, it, here it is when I kind of cut it apart and, and whatnot. Uh, wow. So you can see how the orange lace is mounted on top of the dress, but there's a lining behind it. There's the velvet, which we just found in a box somewhere. Uh, and then with the sleeve cut off from the orange top, we added it to the bottom of these sleeves and then obviously cut off the skirt. I don't know. I bet you we kept those three skirts and probably made them into something else because on Murdoch Mysteries, we actually love to reuse things all the time. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, and then it looked absolutely beautiful on Shanice. Here we go. This is I always try and pull my uh, I try and pull my talent to go quick fashion show, and the ads always stand there and they go no. Um, so I was able to pull Shanice quickly here. Uh, and the other thing that we do on Murdoch all the time is that we have to cut everything down the back so it does up because we don't have anything go over the head because of all of the fabulous hair. Yeah. So no matter what I get, we're always cutting it down the back and adding decorative buttons. So every day it's like, what buttons are we using for this thing? Um, mm -hmm. And then if we see the last picture here of uh, Miss Violet Hart, you can see her in the scene with the blood on her arm. There we go. Wow. We, yeah, we did have. Yeah, we did have to build the skirt and the and the uh, the belts, of course, but um, you know. You still, we still saw the blood, so it wasn't an obvious, I'm wearing a white shirt, so I'm getting blood on myself in this scene yeah. situation. Uh, and I think, it, yeah, I think it worked out very well. I mean, purists would uh, have issues with the elastic at the wrists and the type of gathers and stuff like that. But I think it was very successful on Shanice, and I really, uh, I really like this piece very much. What's great about this is indeed, I mean, you can go to uh, both these places and purchase this outfit. I think if you have some time and if you are a bit crafty, which cosplayers mm -hmm. obviously are, that this Absolutely. is something that you could put together in your home. That's amazing. Okay, yeah. we're going to move on, Joanna, to a, a purple dress that you barely modified uh, at all, that you actually, well, it's a purple dress that you turned into a purple blouse. So um, purple tell blouse. us a little bit about it, where you bought it and how and how close to the original dress it actually is. Well, this is actually from uh, H&M. Nice. And I think, again, all we did was cut it down the back and shorten it. Um, this character, uh, played by Janelle Gunderson, uh, and the character's name, and the character's name is uh, Goldie Huckabee. Yes, Goldie God Huckabee. Bless, yeah. <laughs> Goldie Huckabee is, uh, uh, fortunately, uh, the writers let me be dramatic with her, and I think she's a bit over the top, and we found out last year that she had a bit of a, a problem with stealing things. I can't remember what that's called. When you, yeah, she liked to, what it's called when you steal things all the kleptomania. time. Kleptomaniac. <laughs> kleptomaniac, yes, a bit of a kleptomaniac. Um, so I've always made her a bit dramatic. So the... 
or the, 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 these enormous sleeves, even though they're actually going out of style with where Murdoch is going time-wise, um, this blouse and the enormous sleeves was just was very inspiring to me. And actually the rest of the fabric, the, the little uh, bolero vest and the skirt is fabric mm -hmm. from Fabricland that was on sale in the drapery department. So, Love it. Yeah, uh, yeah, and the skirts aren't terribly difficult to make. We have some basic patterns, but what really brings a lot of drama to this is is how the costume department matched the stripes into these beautiful chevrons in front, and Amazing. then um, yeah, and then oftentimes with the hats, we just this is this is a hat we've probably used six times before. We mm -hmm. just redecorate them all the time with various bits and pieces. Sometimes it's actually even flowers from the dollar store or Michaels or ribbon from Michaels and Fabricland. And the very last thing, which I don't think made it to camera, but she definitely wore is she's actually has a little straw handbag that was from Zara and that was completely unmodif unmodified. It has little straw flowers on it with a pearl in the middle. So again, if cosplayers might have some, uh, uh, some fabric lying around, if they're being interesting with the patterns, like they can be very creative with the patterns and making this look dramatic, like you said, by, by just thinking a little bit outside the box. Absolutely. And I can tell any cosplayer who wants to make any period type skirt, three yards. <laughs> three, yards. <laughs> three yards. Three yards. Every time I find something, it's three yards. Three and yards for a jacket, three yards for... Don't forget to iron your costume before you wear it. <laughs> yes, make sure you iron your seat. Yes, cosplayers. Yeah. Iron your seat. I've just I've Go seen I've seen step. such I've seen such beautiful things that cosplayers have done and I'm just like, "Oh, I just wish that they had ironed the seams, you know, when you're building that you just you iron well, your how, garment." Well, how nice for you to know that they're uh, that for them to know that you're watching, that you're looking at their Yeah. Screen. Okay. We are gonna bring JJ back and we are gonna move on to accessories. From hats to shoes to handbags, the characters on Murdoch and Frankie are put together from top to bottom. How important are accessories to completing the final look? JJ. We use a lot of jewelry on Frankie Drake. It's um, the Art Deco period. So we're lucky and we can have really great earrings and hats and purses. We tend to go to Value Village a lot and raid their jewelry counters because um, there's a lot of good finds there. And Zara has great jewelry. And there's just a lot of good replications right now, reproductions rather. So, I have yeah, to say one of my favorite things is, oh, sorry. One of my favorite things is standing on set and having JJ come around a corner with like eight necklaces in her hands and go like this. <laughs> Necklace, no, not right one. Necklace, no, not, that's the right one. And she walks away. I'm like she is serious as a heart attack and she's always right. Um, what about you, Joanna? Uh, we can't have as much fun with earrings. Uh, I try. I, uh, I try, but, you know, we, we can't find as many recreations. Actually, I keep trying to stop myself from going into Art Deco. I let, I let one character who came from Paris, I let her, uh, her, I let her go into Art Deco. Um, we, again, the same thing that we like to go to thrift stores and see what we can find. I have found a few, you know, Victorian recreation things, which is like pearls and filigree and, and whatnot. Um, I think what's the way that the hair gets dressed, it's just important. It's a tiny little sparkle as opposed mm -hmm. to being uh, an important statement piece for that. But mm -hmm. what's very important in the period are brooches. Um, I like to use long necklaces. And when it comes to handbags, I've actually bought bags from Zara and between hiatuses of the show, I actually make little reticules and handbags just so I have something to be crafty with. So uh, wow. I think handbags are important because I think a woman is on her way somewhere and deserves to carry her lipstick, but ultimately we really, she really needs a place to put her cell phone. So. <laughs> That is one of my, actually my favorite parts of, of, of standing on set is watching uh, whoever our set wardrobe person is on the, on the, when we finally get to the floor, coming with like a selection of our hats and a selection of our purses and figuring out how we feel that day. Is Sharon feeling <laughs> tan purse today or small straw purse today? It's kind of like shopping uh, through our own um, costume closets. Okay, uh, Joanna, what are the hardest costume pieces to make? I Same would say men's after. 
Sorry. Men's suits. Men's suits. And why? Uh, it takes a long time to make a very beautiful man's suit. Uh, one of the really most popular ones on Murdoch Mysteries was, was what we put on Detective Watts. Uh, which hopefully we'll be able to see some pictures of. It's uh, it's green and gray and black. It was a very fine check. Um, and what takes what what takes a lot of time when you want to do such great uh, patterns is the matching of the patterns. Now the tailors in the costume department did such a beautiful job that if you ever look at it, you can see that the 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 checker from here actually matches the sleeve. The, and we made it in triples and the they're all identical they're stunning but they do t it takes about five days to make a man's suit jacket very beautifully and i think about a day about a day to make men's uh dress trousers so women's clothing is not usually as tailored and structured but the men's mm -hmm. you know has to sit very well and and luckily daniel has such a beautiful frame and such a, a slim silhouette that he looks he looks terrific whenever he wears that suit so how many suits are you making a season, like in a 10 episode season? How many suits do you think you're making in your costume department? Uh, we make a couple for Murdoch every year. So he gets he gets new suits made, sometimes in multiples, because invariably he'll need a, a riding double or a stunt double somewhere. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I've been getting jazzier with the fabrics because Yannick himself really likes uh, jazzier fabrics. And mm -hmm. I know everybody thinks he wears a black suit all the time, but not one of them is ever black, like not one. Um, so I make him a couple. Um, if there is a specific need for someone in multiples, we'll make suits for them. But um, I would say we make less than 10 suits, though we mm -hmm. wish we could make more. We make less than 10 suits a year, I would say. That's a, that's a lot of suits. It is, a, yeah, it is a lot of suits. We also have uh, outside tailors that we may give various parts of them to. But, mm -hmm. you know, when it comes to the very fine work of, of, of a jacket, we like to keep that in store or in shop. Okay, and um, you know what, JJ, I'm gonna move ahead. What are your favorite items to have made for the show? And do you have a favorite look from Frankie? I'm a big fan of sequins. Which we and, know. <laughs> yeah. So I tend to like the episodes with showgirls and things like that, where I can spend days just sourcing sequins and fabrics and old showgirl costumes and just put them together and you just kind of build it organically on the Judy. And so I do tend to like the flashier sequin type of costumes, like the mermaid. The mermaid was fun, oh, stuff yeah. like that. Um, I, 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 wore well, I, also like the, I also like the looks for Frankie when she's in vests and suits and newsboy kind of looks. So I'm kind of like, it's like on both sides. I like sequins and then I like the tomboy looks. Nice. Well, it's funny because you, you gave me a, a sequent jacket this season that was so bright that they had to take it in for its own color correction on set for the lighting. Yeah. <laughs> they were like, they were trying to light it and it was, it was like peeking everyone's eyes and I was thrilled because it looked gorgeous. Okay. <laughs> Joanna, what are your top three costume care tips from removing stains? We never eat in costume, but you never know. There's sometimes, you know, oh, you no. got to get blood out like fake blood, hopefully fake blood, um, from removing stains to getting out wrinkles, what's the best way to prolong the life of a costume? Um, I think hand it to my truck person, Paul, is usually what I do. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I prolong the life of a costume. Um, uh, we, we, we do laundry like, no, like normal people, uh, you know, washing it in a sink. We do a lot of of, you know, because the blouses can be a bit delicate. So we do a lot of hand washing. I think that extends the life of a costume. I think actually not washing and not over cleaning things all the time. In the modern day, we're also used to throwing t-shirts and track pants and whatnot in the washer and dryer. But when it comes to actual costumes that we actually prefer not to clean them that often. Um, uh, steaming is always terrific. If you're lucky to invest in a, in a handheld steamer, they've got them, they sell them almost everywhere, Canadian Tire, Home Depot and whatnot. And I think what's very important is how to take care of your clothes when you're not wearing them. So don't let them heap on the floor or sit on a chair, but just hang them up right away. It's amazing how that can prolong the life of, of any garment. Awesome, and how do you guys get out the fake blood? Because there's often something with white, and then you have to get out fake blood. Uh, in most yeah. cases, be, <laughs> in most cases, uh, 
the uh, there's been a little bit of soap maybe mixed in with the blood. We have various recipes that we're oh. used to getting out of things. So it's so you know the fake blood was made intentionally. That's why that's why you can get into a, a funny little discussion on set because special effects has their blood and makeup has their blood and costume has their blood because everybody oh. has it for a different reason and our most important reason is getting it out of a costume. So believe it or not, we can send it to the dry cleaner and they can get it out in most cases um, or just putting soap on it right away and soaking it. Mm -hmm. But occasionally something will get ruined forever. And uh, we're almost always prepared with at least having a, a double for it. So, Okay. All right. So JJ, I'm going to ask you this question. I told her I was going to ask this last night. And she was stumped. I'm interested to see what she's come up with. Oh my gosh. Aside from a sewing machine, JJ, what is the one tool every costume creator should have and why? Well, I've been thinking about this a lot and I have a few answers. Awesome. So there's the, there's the computer mm -hmm. to source designs and ideas and outlets. And then there's the Nespresso machine so you can stay up all night <laughs> and make Very your important. costume. There's your your friends, and I'm not going to call them tools, but your friends in your department to, uh -huh. to actually make the costumes. But there's also, and as, as we've been talking, it, it occurred to me that we build a lot of costumes are organically on the Judy. Like you kind of just throw fabrics onto the Judy and try and make a costume out of that. So I think a Judy, which is like a dress, dress form Judy mm -hmm. that you can buy at Fabricland and places like that, mm -hmm. they're very handy when you're making a costume. So Fantastic. computer, computer, coffee, friends, like your department, sewers, yeah. and Judy. Good answer. What about you, Joanna? The only thing I would add to that is a good pair of scissors. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you how many times I have been stumped with scissors that, you know, crappy scissors that don't cut fabric. It can be very frustrating, especially when you're dealing with taffetas and organzas or sequins or whatnot. So I would say a very good quality pair of scissors and maybe uh, maybe a cell phone charger. How's that? <laughs> Fair. Fair. Oh, Joanna and JJ, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to answer my questions and to have all the lovely cosplayers and fans um, see how what goes into making a costume and how they can make their own costume and how hard you guys work to make us all look great. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Sharon. You're wonderful. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and thank you guys for coming to my bedroom where again, the lighting is still amazing and you can tune in on Monday nights to mystery Mondays, Frankie Drake mysteries and Murdoch mysteries. And if you want to catch up on all the seasons, go to CBC Gem. And don't forget to subscribe to Fan Expo HQ's YouTube channel and be sure to hit the notification button. You guys, I'm Sharon Matthews and thank you for joining us. Have a great day.